Hello, to youngsters. It's teaching artist Rap at the De Young Museum in San Francisco. Today, I'm going to start with a question for you. What do the following things have in common? Any guesses? Give up? If you said phone, hello, hello, you'd be wrong. But if you said camera, you would be right. Camera, 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 and camera. Now I've been studying photography and I've learned how to make cameras out of all these different objects. Today, I'm going to discuss some things I've discovered about photography and I'm going to show you how to make your very own view camera using a box. Now it's not a camera that you can take pictures with like with film but you actually can take pictures with it using some sun print film if you uh, sun print paper if you get some of that. In fact Here's a picture I made using sun print paper. These are garages. It's not a super clear picture. In fact, this is a tree here. Funny how it, the green actually turned white in the picture. You can see the blue sky up here. This picture took about an hour for the camera just to make this picture. So it's not great for making that, but it is good for looking through. And you can see the amazing things in the world that way. Um, I'm going to first tell you about materials to get that out of the way. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about photography and then we're going to make the view camera. Okay, so let's get started. All right, first thing you're going to need is a box. This box is a pretty good size. It's about eight inches by six inches, something like that. You don't want it too big. It gets out of hand. Okay, so you need a box. You'll need some kind of a lens. This one came out of a magnifying glass. You can see on this one, I left the magnifying glass in the holder. So you can do that too. You can use a different size lens if you want, or even one of these kind of flat magnifiers to read with. These are cool though, because you can do stuff like this. Whoa. You have fun playing with a magnifying glass. Just make sure you don't leave it in the sun. Okay, you'll also need some scissors, a pencil, some black paper, some waxed paper, a utility knife, some tape, some glue, and maybe something to write on because you might take some notes to remember some things. Okay? I think that's it. Let's get started. So I was inspired to do uh, some investigating about photography because I was looking at the photographs by an artist named Willard Warden. And Willard Warden took this picture of the de Young Museum about a hundred years ago. Have a look. Now you might not recognize the building because it's actually the old de Young. Now we have a new de Young building. But look closely at some of the statues in the front. Do you notice any of those? If you've been to the de Young, they're still there. Here's another picture by Willard Warden. This is of something in Golden Gate Park called Portals of the Past. Maybe you've seen it on a walk or a ride through the park. If you haven't, look for it next time you come through. Okay, let me show you a couple things about photography. All cameras have a couple things in common. They all have something that I'm going to call a focal plane, something flat usually here, 
That's where the light lands. And they all have something that lets the light through. That's called an aperture. It's a hole that lets the light through. Now, I'm gonna use this lens to focus the light. And let's see, what it, let's see what happens on the focal plane. So I'm gonna make this dark so you can see. There we go. Oh, look at that. You could, oh my gosh. Can you see that? You can already see what it looks like outside my window. Notice everything's upside down because the light comes through in a kind of a cone this way, up and down. So down here is the sky and up here is the buildings, the rooftops. And what I wanna do with this is, I wanna measure the distance between my lens and my focal plane. I'm gonna get my picture nice and in focus as much as I can. Let's see, it's about there. And then I'm going to measure this distance. That's gonna give me the focal length. So let's see, I'm measuring it and it is about, about seven and a half inches. Okay, so the focal length here is seven and a half inches. Let's try a different lens, see what happens. I'm gonna use this little one this time. I wonder if it's gonna make a bigger picture or a smaller picture. Let's see. Oh, look at how little that picture is. See that? Let's measure this focal length. It's kind of hard for you to see the distance there. But this one, this one is about two inches. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. So I'm gonna get my paper, and I'm gonna write large lens, 7.5 inches. That's my focal length. And my small lens, that was, what was it? Two inches. That's the focal length. The distance between the lens or aperture and the focal plane where the light hits and lands. Okay? All right. Let's have a look at how to make your very own view camera now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a box like this. And as you notice, I cut the back of the box off. Okay, I'll show you why in a minute. But I cut it so that it would be about the same length as my focal length. So guess which lens I'm gonna use. This box is about seven and a half inches cut. If you said the big lens, you'd be right. All right, first thing I need to do is I need to find the center of my box side, okay? The side I'm gonna cut. So I cut one side off, now I need to find the center of this side. So I'm gonna line up corner to corner with a ruler, and I'm going to mark just the corners like that. Same thing this way, I'm gonna line up corner to corner. and mark, make marks like that. Now, right in the center of that X, that is the very center of my box. Now I know where to put my lens, which I'm going to now trace around, okay? Trace around it very carefully. Remove your lens. And then we're gonna take the utility knife and very carefully remove the circle where we're gonna put our lens, okay? Now we have, I'm gonna close my utility knife. Always remember to close your utility knife. Now we have a box with an aperture, a hole, just waiting for the lens and a space where we're gonna put our focal plane. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take paper, my black paper that I pre-cut to fit inside, and I'm going to glue it on the inside of my box. The reason I wanna do that is because I wanna make sure that the inside of the box is very dark. 
the only place I want light to be is right on my focal plane. That way, my picture will appear nice and brightly. My image, not my picture, but my image will appear very nice and brightly on the focal plane. Okay, so first I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna glue, I'm gluing paper to the inside. Another way to do this is to just paint the inside if you want. However you want to do it, just make it dark on the inside of your camera. Now, it appeared you were able to see the image fairly clearly looking out my window because it's actually darker inside here than it is outside. <clears throat> so when you take your view camera outside, you'll be able to see things very clearly too, especially if you do something that I'm going to show you in a second. First, I'm going to finish gluing this on. Okay. Put your cap back on your glue. Don't forget to do that. Okay. I'm going to press it down really nice because I won't get a chance to later. If it comes off inside, it'll be kind of hard to, to get in there. So I'm going to do that really nicely. Now I still have to cut out this piece of my aperture. I'm going to show you a way I'm going to do that, which is make sure it's nice and tight on there, nice and gluey. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use like a cup or something and put it over, push it against there. That way I'm not using my fingers on the inside when I'm using a sharp knife. Okay. So I'm going to use it, actually I'm going to do it the other way because I'm kind of right-handed, usually. That way when I press, I have a nice solid surface to press on, but it's not my fingers. Oh, I didn't miss it on that one. Okay, let's see, did I get it? Kind of, not quite. Oh, missed a spot. So now I have my aperture. Now we're going to put in the focal plane first, and then we're going to finally put on our lens. So I took this piece of wax paper with some tape on it, and I'm going to lay it carefully over there, and I'm going to glue it to the side of my box, okay? I mean tape it. Do two things at once, I guess. All right, now I'm gonna pull it very nice and tightly to make this nice and flat, or what I call taut. It's when something is stretched flat. We call that taut. I'm gonna fold these corners over and put a little more tape on those sides as well. Let's see how well I can do this. Hopefully I can get it. Okay. That's a pretty good fold, I think, I hope. Once again, I'm trying to pull it kind of taut, tightly to make this surface nice and taut. I think that's pretty good. We want to make it nice and flat so our image appears very clearly. Okay. We are almost done, friends. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. There's my focal plane. Can't see anything yet, of course. Lastly, I'm gonna put my lens in. So for that, I'm gonna take some little pieces of tape and then tape them to the edges of my lens. A little bit on the lens isn't gonna show up in your picture, so you don't have to worry too much. Try not to touch your lens. Do you see how I'm holding the lens on the edges? That way I won't get all my uh, dirty fingers on my lens. So I want to keep my lens nice and clean. All right, so I'm going to put my lens carefully into the aperture. Now I have an aperture with a lens in it, a dark box, and a focal plane. 
Oh my gosh, can you see that? Look at, that's the view outside my window. Let's see if I can show you this way. Let's see if it'll appear. Ah, oh, look, there it is. Let's see, make it nice and dark. Let's see if I can get that nice. Oh, there it is. Can you see that? That is the view outside my window made using my view camera. Now you can really see the buildings very clearly, right? And you can see trees and the sky. Now believe me, it appears much clearer here than it does on your screen. When you make yours, you're gonna be like, whoa, that's pretty amazing, okay? So that's the view camera, that's how you make one. Couple last things though, when you take this outside, I suggest you bring something like a sheet or a pillowcase to put over your head. The reason is because you need to make it very dark so that your image appears very clearly, okay? When you do that, I suggest you bring someone with you because while you're looking at the amazing wonders that your view camera produces, you're gonna be so distracted, it's very easy to trip on something or walk in the street or something like that. So you wanna have somebody with you so you don't do that. And if that person has a cell phone with them, it's even better because that way you can use their camera, hopefully, carefully, to take pictures through your view camera, okay? So what you can do is something like this. Let's see if I can get a picture for you right now. Maybe, let's see. Mm. Let's see if I can show that to you. I'm gonna try to add that on the bottom of your screen here so you can see the picture that I just took through my view camera. In a later, um, in a later video, I'm gonna to try to show you how to use your view camera to take pictures using uh, cyanotype sun print paper. That's for a different video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about photography and making your very own view camera. And this is teaching artist Raf for the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco. Until next time, so long.